Let's join our reporter, Michelle Ngele, live from the KICC, where the education conference on curriculum development is being held. Michelle, uh, what are the latest developments from the conference? Is it complete and uh, what's going on as of now? Good afternoon, Akisa. We're currently in the second session of the National Conference for Curriculum Reforms taking place here at KICC. We have over 500 delegates from across the continent, um, curriculum development experts who are here today to discuss a new curriculum that uh, is being proposed by the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, a new system that is likely to replace the current 844 system. And uh, the discussions today are based on proposals that were forwarded by a task force that was converged in the year 2012 to review the 844 process, which is largely being deemed unfit for learners who are unable to adapt to the ever-changing job and career environments. And that is the reason that uh, the KICD is now proposing a new curriculum. And uh, we've had uh, several of the delegates speak of the experiences from their country. Uh, we did speak to the former Minister for Education from Zimbabwe, and notably in Akisa, he told us that uh, the future jobs of the country are yet to be created and it is upon the government to then premeditate on what those jobs are likely to be and then arm learners with the skills and competencies possible to be able to create those jobs in future and so this new curriculum um, that is being proposed is a two six triple three system that will see learners spend more time in primary less time in primary school and more time in secondary school which is a complete opposite of the eight four four system important to note however that this is just the discussion process and in July this year we will be able to take a full look at the national policy for the new curriculum which is currently being developed by the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development as well as other policy makers. Now in the first session we had uh, Education CS Fred Matiangi and uh, Deputy President William Ruto who was the guest of honor standing in place of President Uhuru Kenyatta who could not make it here today and uh, the Deputy President did actually actually note uh, that Kenya's education system, the current education system, is quite an outdated one and uh, we need to keep in mind with 21st century skills of learning. Unfortunately, Akisa, we're not able to speak live to some of these delegates right now because they are engaged in a panel discussion, uh, if you can see behind me, but we'll be speaking to them a bit later. Joining us now, however, is uh, a student from St. George's Primary School. Her name is Okia. She did give quite a heartfelt uh, speech earlier on in the first part. Now, okay, tell us, what are your grievances or maybe what do you think of the current 844 system? Um, for me, I think it's too heavy, too long, boring, because you, from study one to eight or from nursery up to eight, you'll be repeating the same thing in the classes, so it makes you tired, but uh, yeah, it's, it's very tired, see, and then it's not equipping you with the talents that will help you in future. Mm -hmm. Now, this new curriculum that is being proposed is going to be very hands-on and offering students skills. Are you excited about that? Completely. I'm really excited about it. First, my aim is that we will have concept that will fix that to the global village, and then that is online learning, and then I will also be happy if that we children are engaged in the decision making concerning us and also giving us platforms that you could express our views and give our views that we think what we think is good for us and what is bad for us. That's right. Thank you so much. That is uh, Okia from St. George's Primary School speaking to us about what she hopes to see in the new 2633 system. Now, Akisa, this is where we will end. Uh, but remember, uh, the 844 system was meant to be a practical one to offer students practical skills. And when it began, they did, in fact, have agriculture and other you know, practical education, such as home science and woodwork, many of which were phased out in the year 2000 two when a review was done on the curriculum and so now students are mostly learning on theory in mathematics and science and English they really know uh, skills that are being equipped for our students and so we'll be waiting to see and this policy framework that will be availed unveiled in July later this year Akisa. now Michelle before I let you go of course we have some most of the delegates are vouching for the new system but do we have some who are against it 
Come again, Akisa. We definitely have those who are vouching for the new 2663 system, but do we have delegates in attendance at the conference who are opposed to a change of the curriculum? Absolutely not, Akisa. Remember, this curriculum reforms comes 32 years after the last curriculum reform was uh, take, uh, took place in the country, and that's when the 844 system came in place. The Constitution actually provides for a curriculum review um, every five years, and this hasn't been done in the last uh, in the last 32 years. Important to note, however, is there is a difference between a curriculum review and curriculum reforms, and uh, the curriculum reform that is being discussed here today is actually being supported by all the curriculum experts who are here today because they say African countries, the education system really is not in line with 21st century learning skills and so many countries need to embrace that. Thank you very much. That is our reporter Michelle Ngele joining us from BKICC where there is an ongoing education conference on a curriculum reforms and as Michelle reports, most of the delegates are vouching for uh, curriculum reform to get into the 2663 system as opposed to the 844 system uh, that is said to be bloated and that is something we will be looking to see how it goes on. Michelle Ngele continues to keep us updated on the same in our subsequent